Quantum Eraser learns about experimental design. So my channel is full of um, DIY style uh, explorations and I really want people to get outside and make careful measurements and uh, at the time I'm recording this it's uh, late May so the June solstice is coming up in a couple weeks. I've got a whole playlist uh, for June solstice observations so please check them out. So the theme of this video is, um, is basically on, on gathering data you know, how you can gather data out there in the real world. And, and it's on a couple topics that I discussed with uh, Slick James. So, the, you know, the big question, what's the shape of the Earth? So we have this big question, but can we, can we answer these things? And so one of the most important things is to have proper data collection. And uh, from this Wikipedia article, the goal of all data collection is to capture quality evidence that allows anal analysis to lead to the formulation of convincing and credible answers to the questions that have been posed. And I love this, this picture of the penguin. Now, that's not an experiment. That's just a method of gathering data. So that's like a little, um, sort of like a little drawbridge where the penguin waddles across and, and it's identified, presumably it's got some sort of a chip, you know, a chip tracker or something. It's, it's identified and it's weighed. You know, and so like they've got a whole field full of penguins and as the penguins go out to sea and then they come back and, you know, they get weighed and presumably this can happen year in, year out. So they can figure out, you know, what's the average weight of the penguins, you know, season to season. And so, you know, the, the point is, is that, you know, proper data collection is really, really important. And so there's a ton of ways of gathering data, a ton of ways. So uh, the two broad categories are observational studies and experimental studies. And... Uh, and, and these categories are not uh, discrete, like all the greens and all the, the, the oranges. Um, they're, on, they're not like in their own little silos. There's lots and lots of overlap between these categories. Um, but unfortunately, this category called pure experiments is, is really the only one that, that certain folks in the flat earth debate uh, rely on. And so a pure experiment is one where the data or where the researcher is actively manipulating uh, the independent variable. All right, so let's take a look at uh, pure experimental design. So the researcher can control for all factors related to the outcome, most importantly, the independent variable, but also the other variables are, are kept controlled. Uh, here's another article on pure experimental design. So the independent or predictor variable is manipulated by the researcher, and then all the other variables are, are kept uh, controlled. All right, and then there's another category of experiment, uh, and the only reason why I bring this up is because it came up in the conversation with Slick James, as you'll see. Uh, so there's a, a blind experiment or a blinded experiment, and it really is designed to eliminate uh, bias or to reduce the effect of bias. All right, and so here's a fascinating article by Rupert Sheldrake, um, uh, and it's just looking at how widely uh, used blind assessment I I is done in scientific research, and he found that it's not very widely used at all. So he writes uh, in blue, there is overwhelming experimental evidence that experimenters' attitudes and expectations can indeed influence the outcome of the experimenters uh, of the experiments. And so in single blind experiments, the investigator does not know which samples or treatments are which. Okay, so relating this to the flat earth, uh, flat earth debate, you know, is it possible that that folks are going out there in the field and they're and they they're biased, you know, and, and that may be clouding their 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 data gathering. So one of the things that uh, Rupert Sheldrake did w with his team, they went through a whole ton of journals, scientific journals, uh, and they just looked at, in the last column is how many of these papers used blind methods. So they had a bunch of medical journals and about a quarter of them used blind methods. Uh, but then when they went to the biological sciences, only about 1%, less than 1% of the papers used blind methods. And then when they got to the hard sciences, you know, chemistry, physics, um, the, not a single one used blind methods. And so there, uh, what Rupert Sheldrake is, is posing is it's just an interesting, it's an interesting uh, suggestion is, is can we take an experiment that is normally not done blinded and then and do it blind? So for example, here's a biochemistry experiment where you've got a, an, an inhibited enzyme and then the uninhibited uh, control. So you got your test and then you got your control. But what he's suggesting is that you label them A and B and that have uh, a group of people uh, perform the experiment without knowing which is which, which is A and which is B. 
Okay, uh, and it's just you know it's an interesting it's an interesting article and it's an interesting um, interesting thought about re reducing bias even in the hard sciences. All right, so on my channel. Uh, I like to have uh, civil civil conversations, you know, no yelling, no profanity, um, n no, you know, arguing and interrupting each other. Um, just just having conversations with folks who, you know, maybe they disagree with me about the shape of the earth. And so I had a I had a conversation with Slick James, James Johnson. This is about two years ago, Flat Earth Civil Discourse episode eleven. And uh, I'm going to play a, a quick uh, ninety second uh, um, excerpt. And what I want to emphasize is this, this was an informal chat. You know, it was just two guys talking about the philosophy of science and gathering data. Nothing was planned. Nothing was scripted. Um, just, just, just two guys talking. All right. So here's 90 seconds. So in science, there are a couple of ways of gathering data. One of them is to do a what they call a pure experiment, where the experimenter is, is actively manipulating um, the you know the variables, so they would call that the the um, the independent variable. So yes. you know a chemist will mix together two solutions or you know something, and then like he'll vary the amount of salt that he adds. Yes. You know, like a, a, he keeps everything else the same, but he he puts in ten percent salt and twenty percent salt, and you know, et cetera, et cetera, and then he documents everything and he has the reaction. You know, and so that that's called a pure experiment. And now, especially if uh, the, you know you get in even deeper. There's this thing called a double blind, or you know, a blind experiment. And then a double blind experiment is where the, the the chemist himself doesn't even know the substances he's mixing together. So what he'll do is he'll have a lab assistant say, "I'm going to mix them." I'm sorry. In other words, that prevents bias. It prevents bias. So the lab assistant marks, like, let's say there's there's two there's two concentrations of salt. You know, ten percent. And, and 20% or, or I'm just making this up, but, and then they'll, they'll, he'll just mark them A and B or, or he'll mark a bunch of batches, A and B, or, or maybe numbered, you know, one through 20. And only the lab assistant knows which batch is, is at which concentration of salt. Um, and then the, then the, the chemist performs the experiment and, and takes the observations. All right. So that was just a, a real quick uh, a slice out of our philosophy of science conversation. And I really appreciate uh, Slick James for the, you know, for the talk that, that we had. Uh, and we talked about a couple of things. You know, what's a pure experiment? You know, it's got rigorous controls. The experimenter is, is varying just one, uh, you know, maybe the, in, the one independent variable or you can you can modify two or more. Um, and also we talked a little bit about blind experiments to, to reduce bias, but you know, done with a rigorous controls. Now that's the important thing is we're rigorously gathering data. But as we saw in the Sheldrake article, there are no blind experiments done in the hard sciences. So you know, we were just talking about the philosophy of this stuff and how, how we can get rigor in data gathering. All right. Um, now Quan Maracer um, took, uh, took my conversation and um, and kind of edited it down a little bit. So here's here's what he had. This is a three minute. So clip. in science, there are a couple of ways of gathering data. One of them is to do a what they call a pure experiment. Play again. So in science, there are a couple of ways of gathering data. One of them is to do a what they call a pure experiment. Really? A pure experiment. So oh, bearded numpty dipshit. One of them is to do what they call a pure experiment. Yes, and Anna Nicole married for love and Pol Pot was her florist. I could do that also. Cite source for a pure experiment, please. But I'll tell you what, folks. That's nothing compared what's going to come out of that incoherent pie hole next. If you thought his math train wreck above was a dumpster fire that isn't the numpty dipshit pretender clown of the millennium part this is the piece de resistance of delusional dunning kruger pretender clown dipshittery did i say that right piece de resistance anyone boy no one wants to say anything now okay yeah so pretty much <laughs> So the PA's theory is his thoughts. I said it three times, so you can guys can make fun of me later. I'm sure you will. Uh, like I said, of delusional Dunning-Kruger pretender clown dipshittery. Check this one out, folks. Uh, the, you know, you get in even deeper. There's this thing called a double blind 
or you know, a blind experiment than a double blind experiment is where the 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 chemist himself doesn't even know the substances he's mixing together. Play that you know, again. You're getting even deeper. <laughs> There's this thing called a double blind, or you know, a blind experiment than a double blind experiment is where the 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 chemist himself doesn't even know the substances he's mixing together. I'm just going to leave that with you for just a couple seconds to let that marinate. Uh, you, you you can't expect me to keep quiet there. What is it? Frankenstein school. I just mix this stuff up like, on the Muppet speaker. <laughs> I think he may have been trying out some new pharmaceuticals at the time or something. Even He's, the he chemist. seems a bit dazed. Madness Owen, isn't it? That, that's an odd one. Uh, Adam. As a chemist, right? You are a chemist, right? right? As a chemist, would you ever grab two unknown substances and just mix them randomly? Just to see what happens? Doing, doing a double blind trial, <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? I'd put my aids uh, on and, and just randomly reach for the shelves and see what I could <laughs> I guess so. What the hell? <laughs> It's but then give me cause and effect in that double what? blind, wouldn't it? It's, it's double blind, mm -hmm. so it means that your assistant is also randomly <laughs> collecting chemicals off the shelf, handing them to you blindfolded, and then you randomly mix them together. It's double blind. So I don't know if you picked up uh, the the boldface words are the words that uh, that actually made it um, from from the original into uh, into the clip. Uh, so. Um, I think it's really helpful to see like what the unedited clip is now that you've seen what the edited version is. Let's just take 90 seconds and, and go back to the original. So in science, there are a couple of ways of gathering data. One of them is to do a what they call a pure experiment, where the experimenter is is actively manipulating um, the you know the variables. So they would call that the the um, the independent variable. So, yes. you know, a chemist will mix together two solutions or, you know, something, and then like he'll vary the amount of salt that he adds, yes. you know, like he keeps everything else the same, but he, he puts in 10% salt and 20% salt and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And then he documents everything and he yes. has the reaction, you know, and so that that's called a pure experiment. And now, especially if, you know, you get in even deeper, there's this thing called a double blind or you know, a blind experiment, then a double blind experiment is where the, the the chemist himself doesn't even know the substances he's mixing together. So what he'll do is he'll have a lab assistant say, I'm gonna words, mix up. You, I'm sorry. In other words, that prevents bias. It prevents bias. So the lab assistant marks like let's say there's there's two there's two concentrations of salt, you know, ten percent and and twenty percent, or, or I'm just making this up, but and then they'll, they'll he'll just mark them A and B, or or he'll mark a bunch of batches A and B, or, or maybe numbered you know one through twenty, and only the lab assistant knows which batch is is at which concentration of salt, um, and then the then the the chemist performs the experiment and and takes the observations. So uh, quantum eraser, here's a couple pieces of advice for you. Uh, please learn about experimental design. Uh, doesn't seem like you have. Um, a very strong grounding in the sciences, so maybe you know, maybe take a science class at your local local uh, community college, um, and um, and then also you know you might want to utilize Google. It's it's been two years since I had that conversation with uh, with Slick James, but it didn't seem like you were able to Google the phrase pure experiment um, before you made your presentation. That was uh, critical of of somebody like me who actually knows what what that term means. Um, and then lastly, you know, please use your audio video editing capabilities uh, responsibly because I, I genuinely don't think the people in your panel uh, knew that what you were playing for them was, um, was edited down. Um, and wait, hey, I, are you asleep? Wake up. Did, did you even hear a word I said? Wait, come on, John. All right. Bye-bye. So, quote from Winston Churchill, the truth is incontrovertible. Malice may attack it. Ignorance may deride it. But in the end, there it is. So as always, your comments are welcome. Uh, and if you do uh, leave a comment, please be kind to each other. And uh, especially, you know, like, like those folks in the panel, I, I don't think they knew. They knew that they were listening to something that was doctored up. So, so they, you know, those, their comments were, were genuine reactions. And I, I probably would have said the same thing. So, so please, please be kind to each other. Um, sp spread a little, uh, little kindness in the world. Bye-bye.